Hi, and welcome to Hush Loudly on Can TV. I'm Jerry Bingham, your host, where we talk about all things introverted. And today we're going to talk about introverting over the holidays. And for you introverts, you know what that means. You know, we're Thanksgiving, whatever you celebrate in December, whether it's Christmas, Kwanzaa or whatever you celebrate. And there are all these gatherings. We're going to talk about that and how you make it through those times. So my guest is someone that I call the star of Can TV. Her name is Christina Steve and she has a show called For the Culture. So I'd like to introduce you to Christina. Hey, Christina. Hey, Jerry. Hey, audience. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, tell us a little bit about your show and then we can jump right into the topic of Over the Holidays. Absolutely. So, yes, I host a show that airs every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Can TV and streams on CanTV.org called For the Culture. And the purpose of the show is to showcase people in Chicago and Chicago land who are doing really dope things. And the topics cover arts and entertainment, covers business, covers women's issues, black and brown issues, pop culture, trending news. And for me, it's just this opportunity to platform people who are just doing great things that we don't hear about or see. So just all that's great about Chicago. And it's a great show and it has been airing right before mine. So mm -hmm. it's just like a a wonderful hour to watch on Can TV on yeah. Tuesday nights. Uh, so first, let me ask you, are you an introvert or do you consider yourself more introverted? Yes, I am an introvert. Do you think people would be surprised to hear that? I think so, because my background is in communication. So to communicate, you do have to have some sort of ability to interact with people. Um, but I'm able to do that task and do that work, um, but also understand now as a big aged introvert that <laughs> I know where I get my energy from and it's not from other people because um, that's what introversion is about. It's not being shy or being scared or whatever. Although those are some traits that people who are introverted can have. Um, so yeah, I think some people would be surprised, but others who have been around me when I'm in settings that where there are a lot of people, I kind of retreat back or other people are talking at the table. I just let them go and I'm like heavy in listening mode. And if I feel I have something to share, I share it. If I don't, I don't. Yeah, that's the, the life of an introvert. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you were talking about in big groups and big settings. So that's a perfect segue to talk about the holidays. Mm -hmm. um, you know, holidays are very interesting. I think many people expect uh, that you be at someone's house and 25 people are in a kitchen and and all of these activities that may start at three o'clock and may go to midnight. And I know me as an introvert, that's just not that exciting or sexy to me at all. <laughs> and so I wanted to talk to another introvert about it. So let's get into the holidays. So maybe we could start with like Thanksgiving. What's your ideal Thanksgiving? That's a good question. So I think for me now, I live my ideal Thanksgiving. My husband and I travel to a place, whether it's going to see his um, mom in Tucson um, or uh, a international locale. And it's kind of just us. And he has a small family. I have a small family and we're eating together. We may watch something on TV together, but it is not a big to do. It's not a lot of people that we have to go visit visit or coming over. So that's the kind of perfect uh, Thanksgiving for me. I like food. So good food <laughs> being involved as well. Right. But just small, intimate uh, gathering or traveling to a nice place. That's so in line with just introverts and how that energy, you know, which we don't need it, as you mentioned before, from a ton of other people. It's usually inward and that's very draining for us. And the same for me. I love traveling like last Thanksgiving I was out of the country and it was just so amazing with my one friend and then when my parents were still here you know it was just a small gathering of us but I remember years ago where family would come to Chicago and the house would be full and then our neighbors would have uh, a big gathering and we'd have to go between houses and it was all day and all night mm -hmm. and it was so exhausting to me and then even I remember younger we would go to these college parties 
and all of these things, which I'm so happy I don't do anymore because <laughs> it was exhausting. Yeah. And and I, so I want us to sort of uh, give some thoughts and strategies to introverts. So what would you suggest? So if an introvert is in a family mm-hmm. that's large and they're having all of these gatherings, you know, what can you advise to them you know, because I remember how people had called me bougie or mm. stuck up because I didn't want to do everything with everybody else or I might dip off. So mm-hmm. if everyone is in one room, I might dip off for an hour or a few minutes or so. And people, I think, judge that or yeah. misjudge that. So what do you think about that? So accurate AF. I think <laughs> that, um, first of all, giving yourself permission to if you don't want to be in that space for an extended amount of time, maybe it's an opportunity to educate your family members and say, you know what, I'm actually introverted. Let me share why I'm dipping off. Because when you say people think you're stuck up or you think you're better than anybody, everybody else because you don't want to be in that space, I definitely experienced that when um, I was dating a person in college and their family, all of them got together, all the cousins and aunts and grandparents and everybody's together. And I'm kind of, I'm quiet. I'm not talking to people. And it's like, well, why is she not talking to anybody? What's wrong with her? We're not going to, you know, and it's like, now I I will say, I just, it's not something I want to do or it's not something I'm interested in, but you guys go ahead, have fun. It's cool. So giving yourself permission. And then if you do have or get invited to a bunch of different things, like it's okay to be like, I I can't make that or I'll see you another time just to manage your own energy, have some boundaries around your, you know, how you feel when you have when you feel like you have to show up for other things. And people will understand, like, I think we think we're the centers of the universe and we're so not. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I think and and, and at this age, it's different. And Mm -hmm. I think at young when I was younger, I would do things I didn't want to do uh, because I didn't want to come across in a certain way. And so that was really unfortunate, but that's part of my growing. Mm -hmm. And I don't do that anymore. I say no. Uh, And people would get offended if you, you know, don't stay long enough and Mm -hmm. all of that. And you can never satisfy people. So why try? Exactly. To satisfy yourself and maintain what you need to maintain for yourself. Uh, Is it different, you think, for other holidays, you know, for like, if you celebrate Christmas, Christmas or whatever you celebrate, do mm-hmm. you think it's a little and New Year's Eve, mm-hmm. you know, so New Year's Eve is kind of like the party night. Yes. Uh, what are you doing on New Year's Eve? So New Year's Eve is unique for me because I like when we talk about how we grow when I was younger, there was that FOMO, right? The fear of missing out. Like I should be out in the street yep. drinking, yep. And, you know, being stacked up in somebody's party, breathing in smoke. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. And now it's like I got we got engaged on New Year's Eve. And so it's just it was very intimate in in our suite in Santiago, Chile. And so now it's like that that uh, holiday holds such significance for me that most of the time I'm we're in the house, like, yeah. you know, just watching a countdown on television. But I do think for different holidays, there are different you know ways, like even the 4th of July, like you feel like you need to be at somebody's barbecue or be out enjoying the weather. And it could be just you want to sit in and maybe watch the fireworks on TV and eat your own food and because mm-hmm. you know where it came from. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's really about um um, again, like how do you how do you entertain yourself? How do you enjoy things? What what is enjoyable to you? And then that's what you can gravitate towards to curate your own way of enjoying life with other people. Yeah, yeah. You said so much that you you got my mind kind of spinning um, because you made me think about how. Um, one of the strategies that I would suggest to someone, if you still feel like you have to do these things, you have to show up at Big Mama's house or whatever, I would suggest you go really early mm-hmm. and leave, but your face is seen, mm-hmm. or you go really late yeah. where everybody's drunk or whatever, or <laughs> tired or sleepy, mm-hmm. and with your face has has, has been seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to go back to you and uh, getting, you and Munson getting engaged. Um, 
um, I, I wonder, it's interesting, and I never asked him this, but it's just making me think. I get would assume he knew you well enough to know this is what you want. Because I always see where people get engaged and it's in, at a party in front of 200. Mm -hmm. And it's all that. I would hate that. <laughs> and so I love that he knew exactly what you wanted because I think there's an assumption that mm -hmm. um, it's supposed to be in front of every person that this girl knows. That yes. this my fiance, your future fiance knows. Right. So I love that that he um, that he did that, and that I'm sure it was a surprise. You weren't expecting it. It was a total surprise, and yes, it was definitely in line with who I am. And it was funny because maybe like a year before that, a friend of mine proposed to his now wife at a house party and it was a game we were playing and he proposed to her in front of everyone and I think it was appropriate for, for them right. but in the moment I was like oh my god I would <laughs> hate that I would hate that right. um, and yes we were on vacation uh, for the holidays and we, it was us in the suite by ourselves and we had went to visit his mom right before that he could have done it then but he knew who I was how I like you know being private and it just being us and it was fine. I, we didn't need to put on a show for a bunch of people. Um, and then we took pictures and called people after. Mm -hmm. So, And I think you hit on some key words there about private and intimacy and just being us. And I think that's what introverts like. Yeah. That's what we crave versus our friends, the extroverts who we love and who we need. Mm -hmm. They crave the other things. So right. they may want to be engaged at a group, you know, at a party for 200 people. And mm -hmm. we're not knocking that. Right. But not just at all. saying that we need some Something different. Yeah. Uh, do you remember like before you got married with like your holidays and, and New Year's Eve? What did you do? <laughs> so, again, it was that fear of missing out. My oh, friends right. are going out there like, oh, what are you doing for New Year's? What mm -hmm. is the whole, you know, perennial question? Like, what are you doing? Well, I don't know. Well, there's this party or this club is doing this and it's $200 a ticket. <laughs> um, you know, let's roll. Right. And I'm going. and But I'm like looking at my watch every five minutes right. or I'm like okay I've had one or two drinks I don't drink that much but I've had one or two drinks the music has played I have danced a bit I'm ready to go right I'm ready to go and right. get in my bed and go to sleep <laughs> right because it's not even fun or it may be fun for a minute or once you see everybody like you said you check off the box you get your drink yeah. you're whatever and it's freezing let's not forget where we that live part. and so you're in heels or whatever it's mm -hmm. just to me to me New Year's Eve should be spent in your house. Yes, That's yes, <laughs> yes. And so what I started to do then is perfect the cameo appearance. Yes. So that's another tip. Yes. Like I came in, made my cameo <laughs> and hi and a sip and then I'm out. Yeah. So I've shown up, but then I'm gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so and it's I think a lot has to do also with our maturity, yeah. you know, and, and 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 understanding who you are and your identity. I yeah. think that helps. So very different from probably how we were in our in our 20s. Yeah. But I think these 20, these mill Z's, the Gen Z's and millennials mm -hmm. are getting to know who they are quicker than we they are. did. They so are. So they like they will ghost like that's their thing. My thing was a cameo appearance. <laughs> they gonna ghost. They gonna leave. Deuces, shake the deuces, and be gone. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, they seem to be like that. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, my last food, few New Year's Eves have been wonderful, and I've been alone, and mm -hmm. I have been watching the Twilight Zone marathon, oh, which I had shared with you before. Yes. Um, I'm a big Twilight Zone fan. I'm a big Alfred Hitchcock fan. Mm -hmm. But the Sci-Fi Channel, every New Year's, starts airing it like New Year's Eve, and mm -hmm. it goes all the way to like January 2nd. And every year, there's an episode that I never saw. Mm -hmm. So it's 24-7. It's It was that many. I think it was seven or eight episodes of The Twilight Zone. And I love that. And yeah. I cook my favorite meal, and I may have some champagne. Mm -hmm. And I, I may be asleep at at midnight, but it doesn't even matter. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. Right, right. And then I'll wake up and turn it back on. So it's like everybody needs to figure out what works for them. And that's yeah. for introverts and extroverts. And don't feel obligated to right. do all of these things that you know are not good for you or that mm -hmm. are draining for you and just not fun. You yeah. don't have to do them. Yeah. And I think that for some of us, you know, if we so want to host a party, we can host something very small, like yep. four people 
or six people, and that might be getting to be too much, but you can have something where you create intimacy during the holidays with a small group of people um, that could be nice. Or again, you could spend it by yourself or with your significant other. But there are ways instead of having to go to every big party or right. big family gatherings. Right. And that's with all celebrations, not just the holidays. I just for my birthday, I had done something that I've never done before. Usually I am out of town. I'm ghost on my birthday <laughs> and that's very intentional. Um, and uh, this year I just didn't want, I wasn't sure. And so I had just a few girlfriends meet me at a bed and breakfast. Wow. And it was so amazing. And of course, the introvert in me loved, we each had our own bedrooms mm-hmm. and bathrooms, no sharing. Mm-hmm. And I'm a giver, I'm a sharer, sure. but not. we're not sharing that. And right. Too many girls in the bathroom, that's just too much. Right. Um, and you're waiting forever. And it was just lovely. <laughs> yeah. And we uh, played some games, and I'm not a game player, Yeah. but it's like we were just kind of sitting around and had a fire and uh, had a great dinner and had oh. some drinks. And it was so intimate, just yeah what you're saying Mm -hmm. and it's like I made it exactly what I wanted it to be Mm -hmm. and that's what we introverts need to do you can create and curate exactly the experience that you're looking for absolutely Um, what about like Valentine's Day I don't have a sweetie but you have a sweetie Mm -hmm. but I assume that it's the kind of like the same so what are you doing on Valentine's Day because I feel like there's so much pressure in this world um, that you need to say that you are doing something or going out if you are seeing someone Mm -hmm. and what about advice to introverts for Valentine's Day? So I'll take this one based on before marriage and after marriage. So before I got married, Valentine's Day for me, even though I didn't have a special someone, I would treat myself special. So I would cook something. I would watch a sappy rom-com because you need those in your life sometimes. I would buy myself candy and I was a big flower buyer. Like Mm -hmm. that, I will... People say it's a waste of money. No, I will not. spend my money on flowers, and I was spending money on flowers for myself to just beautify my space, make me feel like in that, have that energy of love around me. Um, or if I had a girlfriend, if we wanted to go out and have just a, a, one, a one-on-one you know, dinner with each other, we would do that. Then after um, getting married, Valentine's Day, you know, it's cool, but it's like not a Hallmark holiday, but Mm -hmm. like Valentine's Day for us is every day. Mm -hmm. Like we try to really treat each other with love and respect and all of that every day. But when like because we travel a lot. So if he's in town for Valentine's Day, we'll go to dinner someplace. Keep it real simple or catch a movie or a play. um, And we, we have a nice conversation. And yeah just have a dinner and it's just it's very you know nice and intimate so yeah mm-hmm. yeah so introverts I hope you're listening to this and extroverts who are married to or dating introverts this is some good stuff you need to hear mm-hmm. and not assume that we want to do what everyone else is doing or what you see on TV or what right. you think um, women and men want mm-hmm. you know you're introverted spouse may want something something totally different. Yeah, and we probably forgot to mention my husband is an extrovert. Yes. And I'm an introvert. So, yeah. And that happens often is that balance. Mm-hmm. Um I think we give and take and that that that's pretty common. Yeah. Um I for some reason I started thinking about like so traveling um, when you travel, and it's kind of off topic a little bit, but when you travel, I feel like it's still a celebration. What do you do? Do you, are you more like a, a chilled vacationer or are you adventure seeking and you're climbing mountains and doing things like that? So like when you and your husband are away for the holiday and, and especially with him being the extrovert and you being the introvert, how does that work? So I say it is vacation, not recreation. So (laughs) I'm not repelling or zip lining or any of that. I do work out on my vacation. So I may hike or walk or do things like that. But especially if we're someplace where it's warm and tropical, I'm on a beach, I'm by the pool. I'm really trying to relax and unplug. Um, My husband, this is funny, when we're on a plane, my 
my husband talks to any and everybody. <laughs> he will have a conversation. He will share his snacks with people. Like he <laughs> will fellowship with you. He has a I business connection after y'all's conversation. Um, he'll pray with you. Like he <laughs> will talk to people. Whereas I'd be having these guys on, or I have a book, or I have my Kindle. Like I'm just not trying to talk to people in the airport or on the plane and no offense it's just I don't want to have to do that small talk stuff right and that is one characteristic of introverts that I've done in my research we don't care for the chit chat the idle chat the small talk we care about um, conversations that have meaning and Mm -hmm. not to disrespect chit chat but just we don't need it. We don't we don't have to have it. And it's funny how I think that you are signaling people because I do the same when I travel mm-hmm. and I travel like Thanksgiving when I went to Dubai with my friend Elaine. She is a Munson. She <laughs> is extremely <laughs> extroverted. She talks to everybody. She gets us in everything. She gets us. And I'm just right behind her. Grateful. Yes. <laughs> Talk. Go ahead, girl. Right. And um, but it's funny how, yes, I am very clearly showing what I want to do on the plane Mm -hmm. when I have my book and I have my AirPods in or if I'm writing and and I think people should should notice those social cues uh, because I have had instances not with her where I've been on a plane going somewhere and somebody is still trying to talk to me like I'm like you don't get it you know and so that's interesting that people don't pick up on on those social cues. Yeah, and I think so. What's great is if you Uber or Lyft, they have a feature in there where you can tell people, the driver, you want a silent ride. Like game on like I would like my rides to be silent <laughs> I've heard that I haven't been in an Uber lately but mm-hmm. I love that I've heard that yeah 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 so, it's yeah. cool okay so back to the holidays um, we have also the barbecue holidays The you mentioned the 4th of July um, so everyone should just be thinking be more mindful of I want people to be more mindful of their guests. So Mm -hmm. if you are throwing a big bash, a big party, Mm -hmm. uh, according to research, half the world is introverted. Mm -hmm. So that would mean that half of the 100 people that you are inviting are introverted. And so I want people to be more mindful and thoughtful, uh, not be offended if Mm -hmm. we don't show up, not be offended if we dip out, you know, and just (laughs) understand that we just like things that are different. I remember one day you sent me a text because you were, we had been talking about introversion and I think on a panel and you were saying how you were leaning into it. I think, I don't know if you were at a conference or a Mm -hmm. cocktail party and you were I think, embracing it and talking about your observations. Do you remember that? I absolutely do. Like it was yesterday because it was such a clarifying moment for me. It was, you know, after kind of the pandemic and things were opening back up and people were doing events again, it was a holiday mixer for an industry um, association. And I walked, I went there by myself. So that's number one, like even just going to places by yourself. I think it's has, it, you have some courage, right? Because yes. you don't have a someone to like buffer yes. the uncomfortable feeling of being someplace by yourself. Yes. So I walk in by myself, um, room full of people I don't know. I grab a drink and I at my little table and I'm just looking around and people are coming to talk to me and I'm engaging them on a one on one basis, right? It's not I'm holding court with a bunch of people and I s- did my cameo of. <laughs> <laughs> stay there I'm for yes. <laughs> stay there for about 25 minutes had a couple chats and then I was able to go I, and it was fine and I texted you like I felt okay. I didn't feel I needed to talk to everybody in the room or I needed to represent for the company I was working for at the time. It was, I I approached this event on my own terms and it was okay. And the conversations that I did have were meaningful enough, right? Yes. We had, we, we had a witty repartee and then I was gone. So mm-hmm. it, yeah, I was like, I'm feeling this now more than ever because mm-hmm. there was a time where I would have an 
expectation on me, or a, I would imagine mm -hmm. that I would have this expectation that I'm supposed to be networking with everybody and I'm supposed yes. to come away with five business cards and, you know, I should maximize my visibility at this event. I'm like, no, I'm here and I've talked to two people and that's okay. I and I bet the two people that you talked to, you had some sort of authentic conversation with them mm -hmm. and that probably turned into a relationship if they were brand new yeah. or continued an existing relationship. That's one thing I've noticed about myself when I used to go to a lot of conferences there are people who I'm still in touch with. The two people that I met mm -hmm. at a thousand person marketing conference or something in California or somewhere right. where everybody else is spread out trying to meet as many. But I talked to that one or two people mm -hmm. and we have partnered on something or we've built something right. together just from that one meeting. And I think that's something that introverts uh, are good at and we're naturally good at doing when we have some kinship or friendship and we start a conversation or they start a conversation with us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Totally yeah. agree. Yeah. So um, what else do we want to cover? Uh, I think we covered the holidays, but I hope this is some good advice to people for gatherings, period. Mm -hmm. Conferences, uh, gatherings for the holidays, um, planning yeah. for your spouse. Oh, here's another thing I meant to ask you. Mm -hmm. So what do you like to receive in terms of gift giving? So what mm -hmm. do introverts want for Christmas or whatever holiday you celebrate? Do you? That is a good question. I mean, because as, as an adult, I don't get as many gifts and right. I'm not really a gift person and it's really the sentiment like if you've thought about me and you've given me either some candy or um a nice uh journal like that that's probably what I do like I like writing instruments so I like journals I like nice pens I'm a pen snob I like tea because that's a part of my ritual for myself um so nice teas and and things like that um, so, yeah, th those are kind of the gifts that I like. And so I would say to the extroverts shopping for their spouses, just pay attention to what your introvert is doing yeah. and what they, you know, what they seem to enjoy mm -hmm. and see if you can repeat that and give them that for Christmas. Yeah. So I think that's about all we have time for today. Christina, tell us a little bit about more about your show and yeah. when people, how people can follow you for sure and learn more about you. Yeah. So um, if you want to connect with me on the social media platforms, I'm at CC Steed on Twitter. And of course I'm on LinkedIn and for the culture again, airs Tuesdays at 7 p.m on Can TV channel 19 and streams on CanTV.org and you can find it on YouTube and then if you want to just learn more about me I have a website ChristinaSteed.com I do a lot of things communications diversity equity and inclusion consulting things like that and let me just shout out I'm an adjunct professor and professional fellow at DePaul University and I appreciate my DePaul Blue Demons Thank you. Shout out to DePaul. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure to have you on Hush Loudly on Can TV. Thank you, Jerry.